Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm going to be looking at Frontier First Encounters, which was the second sequel to Elite, and therefore the direct predecessor to Elite Dangerous. And if you've been paying attention, you, attention, you'll know that Elite Dangerous Premium Beta 2 should be out today, but I, of course, am going to be unable to play it until I get home from work, which is why I'm looking at this tonight, to give you a taste of what things once were. Now, this was released in 1995, but this is obviously not the version that was released in 1995. This is a a reverse engineered executable. This is per this particular version is the Andy J patch. They have added direct 3D support. They've retextured all the models, I believe, or many of the models. Obviously, it uses Windows Direct 3D for rendering. It's a lot faster and smoother. It doesn't need hacked or patched. And if, and this is a this is the original title sequence running with the original music and everything there. That spacecraft is the Argent's Quest, or the Turner's Quest, or the Argent's Quest. I, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be, but it is a very important ship to the plot of Frontier First Encounters, which deals with uh, establishing contact with the Thargoids. Or rather, whatever. What the question of what happened to the Thargoids between the original Elite and its immediate sequel, where they had disappeared so that's uh, one of the space stations there. Note that it fl the spacecraft flew through the gap in the structure. One of the things I remember was that uh, Frontier did a great job of its collision detection. And these are the Vipers. These are the police spacecraft. You see them in their blue and white. Note also that these have curves. Now, in this, the curves are approximated by meshes of triangles, just like in every other game. But if, if I understand correctly, the original Frontier and first Frontier First Encounters engine was actually capable of rendering curved objects like natively. It didn't approximate them. Ooh, there's some mines coming out, and one of the police dies to it. But while these guys are shooting at each other, well, something bigger and badder comes along. What is this? With its big fat green lasers, that is a Thargoid mothership with its uh, TARDIS-like oscillating thing in the middle. And there are the credits, yeah. First Encounters, 1995, Frontier, 1993, and Elite in 1984. So let's actually hit a key and start a game. Oh, and I immediately fired my laser because I... Yeah, wow, okay, that can be a problem. So, wow, all sorts of dramatic music going on! Da-da-da-da! No, um, let's actually just start by taking a look at these icons here. They, these click through the various regions. So, first thing I want to actually take a look at, and i got to remember the buttons to push here, this is the, the galaxy map, and you, of course, can move it around and drag it around. This is a, a fairly small section. You see how it only renders a small section? And if I zoom out, it only does so much. But you can actually go to the, gra the galaxy map, and it does actually zoom way, way, way out. Although, you know, it only really gives you approximate densities. The way this was encoded was you had a you had an approximate stellar density in particular areas, and then when it would get to that particular sector, it would render however many stars were supposed to be there. They rendered a whole galaxy in this, and I'm gonna just zoom back in. This is in Alliance space, and you know, you can just keep moving. You can keep going for a really, really long time. I mean, it's just insane. This is it's a hundred thousand light years across. It's a real galactic scale, at least in the X and Y direction. Unfortunately, in the Z direction, everything is confined to one plane, so you really lose the thickness of the galaxy. Therefore, you don't actually have as many stars as you would otherwise have. Uh, obviously, for each star, you can click on them, or rather, you can make those the center. You can come up with a map. That's not a very interesting one. Let's uh, let's see if we can find one that has. Oh, look at there we go, an A-type star, and this has a bunch of planets. Do any of these have bases on them? Nothing on these. Uh, as you go further out, obviously bases get further and further. Star point reports get further and further, or rarer and rarer. 
Tickenall. Tickenall. What's Tickenall? System explored. No registered settlements. Oh, okay. We're maybe too far away from base. And I forget what way to get back. No registered settlements. We're just moving a long, long way away. And you see the numbers are coming back. Oh, there we go. Some prospecting and mining. Let's take a look at some of these here. None, none, none. Yeah, I guess a lot of this is procedurally generated. And many of them don't have anything as you, as you go this far out. Oh, look at this. We have a binary core here, and then we have brown dwarfs and an M-type flare star and a ton of planets. Look, you can actually go and view this. Oh, right, that's the current one. So you can go to that, and then you can view what the target system is like. So we start with a Lotha B and a, a, a no, a Noha B and a Noha A. And I know if I go out here, you're going to see the other objects. So we see the various, um, you see the flare star as you go further out, and then you get the you get the brown dwarfs and everything else. So you have some very, very complicated stellar systems in this game. It really can be quite amazing. Have we got something here? This has got a... Oh, there we have Cousin's Base. Baker's Mine is a rocky planet with a thin atmosphere. We have gas giants. Obviously, all these graphics are completely replaced from the original. You can see what they export and import. Obviously, this is a mineral exporter since people do mining out on the room. That's the, really the only thing that pays. And as you go further in, you look, we're back to the Alliance space and you can actually see pl real places like Eta Cassiopeia. It's a federal naval base. And uh, click on this. There we go. Federal democracy. It's a safe system. Federation. 10 billion people. And these have star, uh, you know, these have star bases and uh, in orbit and everything. Anyway, you know, you can go practically anywhere. But uh, there's also things to do. Obviously, if you go to the communications, you can go to the stock market and buy materials. I'm going to buy some military fuel for my ship. Why don't I do that? There we go. That's five tons of military fuel. That will help me because I'm also going to look at... Uh, this is the stock market. And... Ah, here we go. Bulletin board. Oh, no. Let's click on pilot status. This is my spaceship. I believe this is a Saker Mark III. Again, uh, look at that. Beautiful. Hey, wait till you see it animated. Um, has a three megawatt pulse laser, bunch of cargo, atmospheric shielding, very important. Automatic pilot makes things a lot easier. And uh, yeah, if you click through, you can see, well, you can see like my uh, equipment. You can see my standing, obviously. The Imperials aren't interested in me, the Federals aren't interested in me, and Interpol don't have any criminal record on me. I've got five tons of military fuel in my cargo bay. If I refuel, you see that's my fuel baggage up now. Great. Here we have newspapers, so we can start reading, you know, news which provides some clue into the background plot. There's a bunch of different journals. We have Frontier News. Oh, the spectacular Wiccan Waste race is on again. Anyone close enough to the picturesque city of Old Curie on the planet of hope in the system of Gateway to get there by midnight on 1st of January can pick up the latest release from the prolific Dream Rock group, Jagged Banner. J Jagged, wow, that's really hard to say. So where am I, one wonders? Let me move back. Oh, hey, I'm in the Gateway system. I wonder how close I am to Curie. Let's uh, zoom in. I keep using the mouse wheel to zoom in, but it's not enabled in here. This is us here. We are on Hope, and I can drag with the right click. There is Curie right there. So I can click, on, or rather, I can click on that and click on that, and that will set my autopilot to old Curie. So I think what I'm going to do is enter this race so we can get an idea of the mechanics. Let's... Uh, Oh yeah, radioactives, i got to get rid of that. I can only be jettisoned in free flight, yeah. Radioactives is what happens when you use up your military fuel. Okay, so talk to the, to the command, to the communications, to the base, requesting launch from traffic control. Okay, so we're ready to go. So we hit the little engines here to lift off, and right-click moves the spacecraft around. So I'm going to 
point my engines up and start accelerating away. Now if I hit F1 I can see the space base behind me. Look at the beautiful detail on that thing. Uh, it's hard to believe but that is way better looking than it originally was because it has been enhanced. So our target is off in that direction. I should go back. Oh there's the external view here. Look at that. And uh, of course to bring up the gear I should probably do that. Now it is exactly like many of these games where you point your spacecraft in the direction you want to go and it will start flying in that direction and I'm hoping that I'm flying towards the sky there because that looks like the ground. <laughs> there might might need some t might need to be some tweaking here. Okay so you see the little uh, navigation marker showing me where the base is well, I'm just going to accelerate up to speed and fly towards that thing. I don't remember how to adjust my roll. Oh, yeah, brackets. Ah, there we go. So I've got to fly over the horizon here. You see that? Now, of course, I'm accelerating all the time. You can see just my velocity increasing. You can also tell that I'm accelerating at quite a ridiculous speed. These things will accelerate... Many of the ships in the game can accelerate at like 20G continuously. So I'm going to head over the horizon to this. Uh, obviously there's some distance to go so I can time accelerate. But now once it gets over the horizon I should probably start enabling the... Start probably enabling my autopilot. Maybe slow down just a bit. There we go. Now, of course, if I switch to exterior view, you can see that I'm using reverse thrust. Note this spinny uh, jet engine, rocket engine thingy. I have no idea what that does, but it's very cool to look at. Okay, so I can click on this and it will start the autopilot. And uh, honestly, I can let the autopilot fly in or I can just time accelerate to fastest speed and it should magically put me there. Let's try this. Bingo! So now, my spacecraft is trying to land. It's going to do this more or less automatically. There we go. Move, target around, and down. You can down there. You can see everything. Coming down at 400 kilometers per hour onto landing pad one, I guess. Nobody ever did this manually. That's not true. I did it manually, but it was just so much easier to do this and then of course you could time accelerate again to get instantly down. Bingo! Welcome, the landing fee of three credits has been deducted and we have some awesome funky music in the background. Okay, so if you remember we had that, uh, we were told about the Wiccan Wear race, so if I scroll through, oh look, this is the bulletin board where we get all sorts of uh, job offers. We can take a small package to the Andwafa system. We can go buy goods bought and sold at Diamonds Trading Company. That is, of course, the black market. Um, there, you can carry passengers if you've given yourself a, you know, a cargo bay. Not a cargo bay, but the stuff that lets you. <laughs> if you give yourself a, uh, a crew cabin, that's it. You can our passenger cabin. You can put crew in. You can get. Uh, let's see. There's passengers. Then you can get subscriptions to the newspapers. Uh, these are assassination missions. First, $86,000 we wish to encourage Mafia of a boss, Veronica Birmingham, in the Ayala system to stop work permanently. Great. Uh, okay, so yeah, Wiccan Wear Race. The race is on. Be the first to get the dream to Gandhi and make them all come true. Contact here to collect your copy. Go for it! Your cargo is life on the edge, and your destination is Gandhi in Wicked World of Alioth 04. Let's find Alioth, and Alioth is right here. Brilliant. 12.9 million years at uh, light years. It's the capital of the Alliance. So we're ready. We're gonna launch. Fire up the engines. And once again. Engines go up, accelerate, oh, <laughs> I don't know where this music comes from, but it's pretty darn funky. Okay, so we've set our destination, we'll bring the gear up, because we don't want it getting affected by hyperspace, and then that's us, 
Hyperspace, we're there. That's uh, that's us coming out of this. That's a little uh, hyperspace cloud we leave behind. Okay, so now we got to get to Gandhi. Set course, best possible speed. And of course, the way this works is it's a proper Newtonian system, which means we are accelerating towards this, this target continuously. There we go. And uh, what will happen is once we get to a certain distance, we will start decelerating, right? That's how it will work. So we can actually watch this happen here. We can watch the engine. I'm trying to find a good angle that will let us see it. Okay, I guess that's what's going to happen. So we can time accelerate, time accelerate faster, and let's do this. Watch it about half, about a certain distance. Look at the speed. We're like up to a significant, you know, a few percent of the speed of light here. Now, engines are decelerating us, right? The reverse engines aren't as fast, or they aren't as powerful, which is why we, uh, which is why they're why we uh, only accelerate for the first 10 AU and then spend. 20 AU decelerating but it's nice you can also see the planets of course flying around their target uh, flying around in proper orbital motion and now we're here we're landing but uh, I don't need to sit through that so uh oh I'm upside down <laughs> I don't know why the planet textures aren't rendering that could be a bug but that's what happens yes Congratulations, you're this decade's fastest Wiccan racer. You have made money. Money, money, money. So if I want to get rid of this radioactive fuel, I believe I have to go to the stock market and I can sell it. And of course, if you want to sell it, you actually have to pay money. You can make money in this game by buying radioactives and making, you know, getting cash for carrying it and then going off to some godforsaken corner of the galaxy and dumping the radioactives in space. There's some other cool things you can trade. Uh, some of the things you need to have life support in your cargo bay. If you buy, for example, uh, livestock and you don't have life support in your cargo bay, then it immediately turns into animal meat, for example. Uh, that's always a fun one. Fruit and vegetables, precious metal. Some places will pay you to take away uh, jewelry and things like that. Uh, actually, I'm not seeing the livestock. I'm perhaps uh, it's just not showing it because I can't carry it in my cargo hold. Speaking of cargo hold, of course you can buy ships here. There's a whole bunch of spacecraft you can buy. The Anaconda is a destroyer. We have the Skeet. Um, I can view it here. Look, there we go. Ooh, look at that. Look at that thing. That is a funky looking spacecraft. This has a registration code of an NX470. What else do we have? We have a lifter. Note how it transitioned from the original design to the, the hacked up, you know, fan modified version. The Lanner. Again, uh, curvy bits on the back there, which in the original game were actually implemented properly. We've got a Skeet Saker Alvarin. Well, there we go. Again, we flicked back and forth. <laughs> Very cool looking, huh? And lifter, griffin, no, griffin hauler. What's this? That's an interesting looking one. I think the largest one in this is the, the lion. Anyway, we, you know, you can see the acceleration here. This has two Gs of acceleration. If you go to the, the Saker 3, which I'm flying, acceleration 30 Gs of acceleration. That's what it needs to fly across a star system at regular speed. Of course, these have weapons, they have shields. Uh, you can get into combat. The combat in the game kind of is lacking. Anyway, uh, this is Frontier First Encounters. It is, you know, a landmark game in many ways. And uh, it's also important to note the original Frontier First Encounters when it was released was hellishly buggy because it was rushed out you know under orders of the publisher and you know frontier later sued the publisher and, and won over this uh, and it really shows i think in elite four that their betas and their alphas are better than you know many production games so yeah this is frontier first encounters this is the the andy j patch or hacked version 
And uh, it's available for free, uh, although you have to own the original Frontier if you want to play it legally. But uh, I hope you have a look at it. I'll see you playing Elite tomorrow night. But until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.